So this is a bed that's in the rehab mode. Um, we have beautiful dinosaur kale and penny barking in the background. Um, I have discovered the Asian jumping worms. Um, it's pretty upsetting what it does to your soil. It turns it into coffee grounds. This was extremely fertile, com fertile compost when I put it in. Um, and now it won't even hold moisture. It's pretty silty. Um, coffee grounds is the best way to describe it. Um, you can really kind of see it in the corners where it just it dries out. Um, the Asian jumping worms stay in the uppermost area of the soil, whereas the European earthworms tend to go a little deeper and they help you compost. But the Asian jumping worms, what they do is they ruin your compost. Right, Penny? I know you don't like them either. This is, um, oh, stop yelling at me. <laughs> This is Mountain Mint, she's jealous. Mountain Mint, some beautiful nasturtium vining. More dinosaur kale. This is Thousand Head Kale. And I pulled all the rest of the kale out of here. Um, these are some scallions that are recovering. Um, I can harvest the greens on that all winter long. So those are nice. This is Thousand Head Kale. This is what the stalk looks like at the end of the season when you've har harvested most of the leaves. Then this is a native that is one of my favorites. Um, not everybody can appreciate this plant, but this is called sunchoke or Jerusalem artichoke. It has many names. And it's a native plant that you can eat the root. The root is kind of like the consistency of a water chestnut. And when you can roast it, you can do lots of different things. You can eat it raw. Um, it's a prebiotic and it's great for people who need low glycemic foods. And then right towards fall, right about now, it starts getting these beautiful, happy blooms on top. So that's probably at least eight feet tall. I can't even reach, not even close to reaching the top. Um, they do need staking unless you trim them back early in the season. So you can see how enormous that plant is. So. 